Hi everyone, my name is Thomas Kim. Today is June 19th, 2019. This is my 35th episode about the future of C++ programming, C++ 2A standard. In this episode, we will learn about parallel algorithm and synchronization. This episode continues from episode 34. If you haven't watched this video, please double click this link and watch this video because this session continues from my previous episode. Also to follow this episode, please visit extensiontalkplayfun.com website and click this button to download complete source code. When download is complete, click show in folder, please unzip the downloaded file and copy this folder, copy, and paste it to your working directory. In this folder, you can find tutorial subfolder. In this tutorial subfolder, I will post complete source code of this episode. Also, to follow this episode, you will have to install latest version of GNU G++ and Clang. If you haven't installed latest version of GNU G++ and Clang on your system, you probably cannot follow this episode. Also, I use latest version of Microsoft compiler. If you haven't installed latest version of Microsoft compiler, please watch this video and install latest version of Microsoft compiler. After installing latest version of Microsoft compiler, and or GNU compiler, then you have to make system environment variable settings. Please watch this video, how to make system environment variable settings for Microsoft Visual C++, GNU G++, and Clang compiler. If you don't make proper system environment variables, then you cannot follow this episode. If you are new visitor to my YouTube channel, Please watch this video, how to install C++ compiler on Windows, Microsoft Visual Studio 2019. Also, please watch this video, how to remove and reinstall GNU G++ over MC2 Minji W on Windows. Also, you have to make proper system environment variables by watching this video. In episode 30, we learned about the parallel algorithm and execution policy in this video. And also in episode 34, we learned parallel algorithm and exception safety. In this episode, we will learn about parallel algorithm and synchronization. If you haven't watched these two videos, parallel algorithm and execution policy, and the parallel algorithm and the exception safety, please watch them now and come back to this episode. I assume you watched these two videos already. Now let's get started. Start Visual Studio Code. If you start Visual Studio Code and open CPP extension folder, then you can find the tutorial subfolder. Select tutorial subfolder Click this button, O35, Parallel Synchronization, .cpp, hit enter. Control B, include, talk play fun, output HPP, include, talk play fun, chrono, random, HPP include thread include execution. We will first test about thread in parallel algorithm. Void test threads in parallel algorithm. We create function int main. In function int main, I'm copying this function name 
and paste it here. If you see this squiggle or this pop-up window, click Configuration JSON. In this file, you will have to add this line of code. Then go to File, Save All, then you can close it. Here, std, vector, element t, b, count. Of course, we have to define using element t, we will simply use int, size t, count, 10. We create auto generator talk play fun chrono random random generator element t we will create zero to count this is a random number generator that generates elements for vector B of type element T or int because we defined int ranging from 0 up to count inclusive for size t i equals 0 i less than count plus plus i b i generator we generate random numbers and initialize container b we generate random numbers and initialize container B. Now we display at the global section talk play fun access stream stream auto and L talk play fun and there now we display the container stream before b and there now start command prompt you should be in cpp extension tutorial folder DIR O certified star hit enter then you can find this file CL we are using Microsoft compiler EHSC SDD C17 O certified parallel synchronization CPP F E M E X E hit enter. You should build successfully M E X E C L S M. So we generated this is nine random numbers from zero ten. This is ten random numbers. If we hit M once again, this is random numbers. So each time we get new set of random numbers. If you want to generate random numbers of double, you can simply change element type here. Then everything changes to type double. Now compile with GNU compiler C++ SDD C++ 17 O certified 
parallel synchronization dot cpp oh this is output file gexe hit enter i think there is some problem i will try l tbb hit enter okay it compiled successfully g now doubles are generated so ltbb is thread building block okay so we, because we are using parallel algorithm we are going to use parallel algorithm including execution we have to give ltbb option this is link option including thread building block now let's try with clan compiler I will modify the generated file name and clang hit enter we are building using clang compiler clang compiler also works each time we run our application new set of doubles are generated I will add two more header files here include access stream include set i will also include mutex and scroll down at this point std mutex mutex we will define using lock type std lock guard std mutex now we are entering parallel algorithm std i will use for each the first element is execution policy std execution we will use parallel i made a type here parallel unsequential it means parallel unsequential then the first element should be vector begin vector end now we are providing this function we will use lambda we will specify lambda here please note that we need to capture mutex as a reference okay then here auto we can take r value reference it doesn't matter and in this block we will create a local std string stream okay os os please note that this is local variable os is local variable os is a local variable we do not need synchronize local variable okay so we do not use synchronization at this point thread id std this thread get id it returns current threads id and i will give a tab then lambda int's address lambda int's std and there now we will create here lambda in int like this lambda int it will be int we initialize with default value of int okay and i will create a local instance int local int i will make it simpler like this 
and t about this part i will correct later std i will simply do this we will also create a set here std set std string thread set so we need a string include string now at this point we also need to capture thread set as reference thread set we captured from this point it is shared okay from this point this thread is shared so we need to lock okay lock type we define the lock type here as lock guard lock type lock we use this mutex mutex okay this is equivalent std lock guard std mutex lock mutex these two are equivalent now at this point threads set insert we are entering the string like this os str we should narrow down i will create a block we should always narrow down the locked scope to prevent deadlock as well as to improve the performance so i narrow down the scope here std cr os str here we don't need end line here we will just delete end line and we will add std end line std c out is a global console output stream this c out is shared among multiple thread so it should be enclosed in the locked scope so this is end of this parallel algorithm okay at this point this is out of parallel algorithm std c out or well, we can just say stream number of threads used threads set size std no and there we are using this instance here and we come display stream threads info threads set and there now we run this program in the command prompt i will use clan compiler hit enter cls sorry i made mistake here 
lambda i n i t we have to provide address like this okay we have to put address now we build once again cls c so number of thread four thread are used this is thread id 1 1 1 2 3 4 so total four threads are used these are running in parallel please understand that we are displaying lambda init's address they are different in case of thread 1 it ends 2110 in case of thread id 1 it ends 2110 the address of lambda init is different depending on thread in case of thread 2 lambda's address is a0 it ends a0 uh, 2 in case of thread 2 it ends a0 it, in case of thread 2 it ends a0 now let's test with gnu compiler this is GNU compiler. Hit enter. CLS G. In case of GNU compiler, is also used for thread. And also the address of lambda init is all different. All different. These are local variables. In each thread has different lambda. Now let's try with Microsoft. This is Microsoft compiler. Hit enter. CLS. M. In case of Microsoft compiler, it used five thread. These are thread ID five thread, and this lambda init are all the same the same address okay so microsoft compiler and the gnu compiler works differently in case of microsoft compiler this is shared among thread among different thread in case of microsoft compiler this lambda init is shared among multiple thread in case of GNU compiler, this lambda init become local. These are different. So you have to be very careful about these, these things. In case of Microsoft compiler, you have to regard this local init, lambda init, is shared. In case of GNU compiler, it is local. Okay? Also, in case of GNU compiler, it always use four thread. In case of Clang, it also use four thread because I have four cores, two core and four hyper thread in my machine. In case of Microsoft compiler, it uses six thread, five thread, six thread. So the number of thread used is different each time I learn. Okay? So this point is very important understanding this point. Now let's think about local INIT. Okay? I will copy this once again. I pasted it here. Test thread in parallel algorithm for locals. Okay? I modified like this. I will copy this function name and paste it here. Then now I display the address of local2. Local int I will put like this. And here local 
int. Okay. Now we build once again. First, Microsoft compiler CLS M. This is Microsoft compiler. In case of Microsoft compiler, I have to disable it. Build again. CLS M. Okay. So, in case of thread ID 6, 4, 0, 6, 4, 0, the local INIT address is 2FA. So, these are different. So, this local variable, this local variable is thread dependent. Each thread has its own copy of local int. Okay, but in case of lambda init, lambda init, the address of lambda init is the same. Okay, for all compiler. In case of lambda init, Microsoft compiler, lambda init is shared among thread. In case of G++ and Clang, plus plus lambda each thread has its own copy of lambda init okay now let's try with clang compiler clang or gnu compiler this is gnu cls g in case of gnu compiler lambda init the address is very different from each thread so in case of G++ and Clang, each thread has its own copy of lambda init. Lambda init is local in case of GNU compiler. Also, local init is different depending on thread. This is thread ID 1, it ends 9C. In case of thread ID is 2, it ends 26C. So they are different. They are, this is local. Now with Clang compiler, this is Clang, hit enter, CLS, C. Clang compiler works the same way as the GNU compiler. Okay? Understanding the difference is very important if you are going to use parallel algorithms successfully. To give you concrete understanding why such differences between Microsoft compiler and GNU compiler, I will create another class and functions. Right before function main class functor, I define a class functor private int lambda init public functor. This is default constructor default constructor is called std and there and here in line static int thread count we will initialize it to zero and here plus plus thread count okay and I will create copy constructor functor constant functor right hand side actually I don't need this here this is copy constructor std cr copy constructor is called std and there, since constructor is called, we also increase thread count. Okay. Now I create functor move constructor functor. Since we created a constructor, we also increase thread count. Std c out move constructor is called 
std ender okay in this case in case of move we do not need to increase in case of move we don't need to increase so we do not delete thread count okay we can create this structure functor we do not decrease thread count we don't do this okay now i will copy this function i copied it and paste it here test parallel test thread in parallel algorithm with functor i modified the function name like this and i copy it paste it here I disable it. Now I need to define operator. Void operator. We are creating function call operator. Okay. Here we don't need to count. I will say we can't do this. I will just say int. Or we can just put template. Type name type. I will just do this. Okay. Don't forget constant here. This trailing constant specifier is important in some case now here we display the address and the thread so i will copy from here up to here i copied it and i will paste it here We will create a mutex std mutex mutex. It does not work static in nine. Okay, static in nine is introduced in C plus plus seventeen. In nine static is introduced. C++ 17 standard and I will also use another one using lock type std lock card std view text so I define the lock type here and it should all work the same okay now we are using operator and let's see how it works what's the problem lock insert we don't have a thread set so we will create thread set we don't need a thread set i will just delete thread set like this i fixed like this now here we delete this part i deleted in this function instead we will be using functor okay 
Now we are learning. No. We don't need this. We don't need this information. Control K C. I delete it. Start command prompt once again. We are using Clang. Okay, CLS. C. Wow. Default constructor is called. Constructor copy constructor is called. Okay, now it is running. Copy constructor is called. I will modify this. I will modify this part. Like this. SDD. Set. String. SDD. String. Thread. Set. This is reference. Okay, this is reference. Then here SDD set SDD string thread thread set thread. I have to fix like this. Also here, thread set right hand side, right hand side, thread set. Also, Right hand side, thread, set, right hand side, thread, set. Okay, because these are shared as reference, this is good enough. Now, in functor, now here, we can enable it. Control K U and we compress this like this. Then everything should be work fine. Now let's try once again. Let's build CLS C. Why? So Where is the thread count? With the punctor, thread size. Why not? Why this message is not displayed? Number of thread. Sorry, I will copy this part once again. We have forgot this part. Copy. We have to insert this part. Now build once again. CLS. So four thread are used. Now pay attention to lambda init. Okay, each time. Sorry, I will make another change. I will modify this. Cut, paste it here. And this is not correct because it is a shared lock type lock 
mute text because this is static copy 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 now now let's try once again here we display stream thread count no no not thread count this is not thread count this is constructor count constructor count and there with the clan compiler CLS okay now it works correctly so constructor is created 35 times okay constructor is created 35 times because each time it is called, it is constructor is copy constructor called, copy constructor called, copy constructor called. So it's a lot of waste, a lot of waste. That's why Lambda INIT is different. The address of Lambda INIT is all different depending on thread. In case of thread ID3, it ends 88. Thread ID 3, it ends 88. In case of thread ID 1, it ends C8. In case of thread ID 1, it ends C8. So in each thread, it is copied and copied again. And total post thread is used. So each time it is called, this operator is called, its instance is copied. New instance is created here. New instance is created. Now we test with Microsoft compiler. This is Microsoft compiler. CLS. In case of Microsoft compiler, constructor is created only once. Okay. Default constructor is called only once. So Lambda INIT, because this it creates only one instance of functor. This lambda init is shared the same because this functor is created only once, only once. In case of Microsoft, in case of Clang, Clang, thirty-five times, it is created only once. Default construct is created only once, but it is copied. Each time the thread is called, it is copied 35 times. It's huge waste. This explains why this Lambda INIT, this Lambda INIT works differently between Microsoft compiler and GNU compiler. So in case of GNU compiler and Clang compiler, this parallel algorithm is not as efficient as Microsoft's. I hope you understand this concept. In future sessions, I will deal another very important thing regarding with parallel algorithm. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.